Good day, everybody. Welcome and welcome back to those of you that are uh, attending another one of our trainings. We're glad that you're here. If this is your first time um, joining us, then welcome. We're happy you're here. So good day, good afternoon, and good evening, depending where you are on the globe. My name is Richard Hinton, and I'm the manager of the Youth Mappers Validation Hub. And with me today, I have two um, two of the Youth Mapper Hub team that will help facilitate this training today. And I'll call on them real quickly to introduce themselves. So Kate, you wanna go first? Hi everyone, um, I'm currently calling in from New York. Uh, I just recently graduated from George Washington University and I've been with the Youth Mappers Hub for a little over a year now. Um, and I'm excited to do this presentation for you guys today. Hi, I'm Kenneth. Um, I'm also with the Validation Hub. I'm currently in Washington, DC, and I have been working with the Hub for around three months. Excellent, thank you guys. So we are the three uh, that will be sort of leading the training today. And again, we're happy that you guys are here. Um, I'm calling in from uh, Virginia, Alexandria, Virginia, just outside of Washington, DC, and I too um, work at George Washington University. So the way things will work today is that we'll have a presentation um, talking about the validation. And then following that, we'll have a couple of quick demos of the actual validation process. So the idea is you'll see how the whole workflow works, how it all goes along. And then we'll actually reinforce that with showing you a live demo of going to the task manager and running through all the steps and sort of closing out that particular cell or task um, as we would when we were validating. If you have any questions while we're going through this presentation, please put them in the chat window. We'll pause periodically through, um, throughout the uh, presentation so that we can address your questions. And um, there's time at the end, which I hope there will be. Uh, we'll have time for some more questions should anybody uh, have anything to add, anything to query about, um, or want anything answered. Okay, so with that, I'm going to start sharing my screen and we'll get the, uh, get the party started. Okay, whoops. As I mentioned, um, we're doing a validation training with OSM uh, using JOSM. And we'll get more into that in a second, but uh, I did want to see, uh, sort of acknowledge that um, just this past uh, few days, just this past Sunday, was OSM's 17th birthday. So we just want to acknowledge happy birthday to OSM. You may have seen it on social media. I know Youth Mappers, we posted a, about it. And as did uh, OSM US and other uh, folks in the, within the US and OSM community. One other thing of note today is today, actually, the 12th of August is International Youth Day, um, as determined by the uh, United Nations. So if you want more information, you see the URL there. But I did want to acknowledge that not only is it the week of uh, OSM's 17th birthday, but today actually is International Youth Day. So I encourage you to go and find more information about that from the UN website as noted on this slide. Okay, let's get into it. <clears throat> so let's start about what validation is. So essentially validation is looking over the work that exists in OSM, just work that somebody else has done to ensure it is of the highest quality possible. Typically, this is done by someone who is experienced with OSM, so they're familiar with how OSM um, treats its features and how the, the tagging system works. And the most common tool used for validation is JOSM. So having somebody with experience with JOSM is also sort of a key component with how the validation workflow um, is set up and how what we, what we will be showing you today. And the idea here is to ensure the highest quality possible from the, uh, from the users and contributors to OSM. One of the other key roles we have in, um, in doing this is to um, provide feedback to the, to the user because we're all part of the OSM community and we're all trying to encourage people to do the best work possible. Oftentimes, especially with youth mappers, we have a lot of new people, new mappers coming online to create new content. So we want to make sure we provide them feedback, constructive feedback 
Um, let them know when they're doing something very, very well. But as well, when they're maybe making mistakes, not quite squaring their buildings, or they're not tagging things appropriately, just very politely encourage them and correct their mistakes. So the, the hope is that we correct this behavior early. So then when they come back and continually continue to map, they do so in a sort of a, a smarter and more educated um, point of view. Over the last several years, um, a validation process has emerged from some of the main sort of participants within the OSM community. Um, the workflow that we're following is one that was sort of established and emerged from the likes of the mentoring of the street map team and the scene maps. So those guys have sort of essentially sort of led the way in what validation is and how it should be conducted using um, the tasking manager and JOSM as a as primary tools to correct people's correct people's work. So that's the process we'll be looking at uh, that we're looking at today. One thing I want to touch on is to why we even want to have this validation process in, in the first place. Because even though you may be an experienced mapper, obviously not everybody is, but even for experienced mappers, we're human, we make mistakes. And if we were doing remote mapping, we're not necessarily experts, obviously, of that area we are mapping. We're looking at a satellite image and we are using our best judgment to identify what those features are. So there can be mistakes. Uh, it can be spatial mistakes, meaning the vector data that we're tracing isn't lined up with the imagery properly. And it could be tagging mistakes. So we're not uh, tagging features quite appropriately. So the idea is that when we are finished with our validation, the data is as true to the real world as possible. When that happens, when we have those good data, then they become very usable and very trustworthy from, uh, from any user standpoint. So this is why youth mappers actually stood up the validation hub is because for several years, we've been obviously cr uh, creating the number of chapters, the number of chapters have joined the network and we've been creating a lot of content, but to be sort of good stewards of the OSM community, good members, good standing, um, we really need to make sure all the data that we create as youth mappers is as good as it can be. Because if it's very high quality, then it can be used and trusted for any kind of GIS analysis or any kind of mapping needs that are used with those data. So that's why we, that's why we sort of set, uh, set this up. Um, so as I mentioned, um, we do have a workflow that has been sort of, that has emerged over, uh, over the last several years. And I'm gonna go through the broad strokes of what that is right now. And then we'll jump into the actual nitty gritty and the step-by-step -step, walking you through what those uh, key steps are. And then, as I mentioned before, once we're done this, then we'll actually show you a demo of how that works in actual practice, okay? So here are the broad strokes sort of in a flow chart. I mentioned tasking manager earlier. That is where the validation process starts. We start in tasking manager, identifying a project that we want to validate. And we need to understand what that project is identifying to be mapped, right? Because what's identified to be mapped is the same information that we need to validate for that project. So we read through all the instructions, make sure we understand it. Once we load things into JOSM, then we start getting, getting to work on what needs to happen next. Things like aligning the imagery, ensuring we have the correct imagery set up um, and we have it, the features aligned to it correctly. <clears throat> Pardon me. Then there's actually a, a validation tool in JOSM that will look for basically a lot of topological issues. We correct all of those then we actually need to use our eyes and our brains to identify and figure out what other issues may be in this particular task that we're working in. Um, there are a number of plugins that you can run to help you find duplicate buildings, buildings aren't squared, a, a number of different sort of topological and other issues can be found. Once we've done all the work we need to do within this particular cell or task, we can then upload those edits back to JOSM and then uh, we need to go back to tasking manager and update the status of that task. Okay. And then that closes the loop on the, um, on that particular task. And when we go back to the tasking manager on this last step, that is when we communicate to the users, to the contributors for that particular task of uh, all the great work they've done, thanking them for coming and then adding any sort of corrective information that we see fit um, to hopefully encourage and help them become better mappers in the future. Okay, so now I'm gonna step back and let 
uh, my awesome youth mapper hub members take and take the helm. And we're going to go into each of these steps in much more detail and walk you through the process. So step one is always to review the instructions. This step is vital to beginning the process of validating. The instructions tell you what imagery you should be using, the types of objects you should be mapping, whether that's just roads or roads and buildings, for example. It'll tell you what type of tags you should be using and to check out any of the linked wikis about the project. Once you have completely read and understood the instructions, you can move on to the next step, which would be aligning the correct imagery. Next slide. After you read the instructions, you should know which imagery to be using. If the instructions don't state a specific imagery, try each one to see which one best fits what has already been mapped. And if the imagery doesn't appear to line up correctly or is just slightly off, make sure that you align the imagery or switch out the image to a different source before you continue to validate. And to align the imagery better, you can use imagery offset, which I'll demonstrate a little bit later in the demo. Next. So Jossum is a great validation tool. It allows for offline editing of OpenStreetMap and it's similar to the editor within Tasking Manager, but it's more powerful and has more features. When you enter into Jossum and your imagery has been aligned, most validators begin by clicking the blue check mark. And that's the validation tool. It will select the features slash data that you want to validate. And then um, all, after all the data has been checked, it'll display the errors, categorizing each by error, warnings, and other, depending on just how severe the error is. After you click it, it will highlight problem features, if there are any. And to look at the specific problem features, you can double click on the specific error and it will highlight it, or you can right click and select zoom to problem, or use the six key on your keyboard to zoom into that problem to fix it. While some of the errors you'll have to fix manually, most of them can be automatically fixed. And this can be done by selecting the error or errors and clicking the fix button, automatically fixing them. After you make your own edits, you should once again run the validation tool just to double check that you're double check your work and assure that you have the highest quality edits. So this is a great diagram um, for determining whether or not you need to finish a task or mark it as incomplete and send it back to the mappers. First question you wanna ask yourself is if this task is urgent. Um, if it is, just fix the issues yourself and then validate it. If they aren't high on the priority list, then check to see when the last edit was made. If it was over a month ago, once again, just finish it yourself. But if it was less, less than a month ago, then you wanna see how active the user is. If they're, a reg if they're not really a regular OSM user or they have very little activity, fix it yourself. Um, but if they are highly active, then you can leave an encouraging comment on what needs to be fixed and tag them to have them fix it and then send it back to the mapping stage. And then next. Step four is to perform a visual scan and assessment of the issues. While doing your visual scan, you want to check to make sure that there aren't any features left that haven't been mapped. Then you wanna look over all the existing features. Do the buildings need to be rotated or squared off? Make sure there aren't any duplicate buildings overlapping each other. Do the buildings have the proper tags of buildings equal to yes? Or if you have local knowledge, what type of building they are, does it have the right tag? When you check over the roads, make sure that roads are connected properly and are not just passing over without connection through a node. And just like buildings, you wanna make sure that no roads are overlapping any other roads or buildings. And roads that are supposed to be connected should be connected. Lastly, make sure that the roads have proper tags from what you can tell. Next. Um, some common issues and errors you might come across include buildings that aren't squared. Simply select the building and press Q on your keyboard. Buildings that may have been tagged as an area, not building, just edit the tag to building equals yes. You can see nodes from buildings that are attached to other buildings or roads. And to separate them, click the node and click G, and then just move uh, the nodes to where they should be. Areas that overlap with buildings, try and separate the polygons from one another. You may see rows that aren't connected to each other, and you can click A on your keyboard to continue drawing until the nodes connect. You might see unnamed ways, but this one you can usually ignore because you don't have knowledge of what the road's called. Um, and then you might see buildings and roads overlapping and du duplicate features. Next slide. 
There are some shortcuts to identifying some of these mistakes made. To search for incorrectly tagged roads, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control F or Command F for a Mac, and then type the words written in blue. When disconnecting roads that are joined to buildings, all you have to do is click the node connected and then press G, which will unglue the nodes. Then place the node where it should be and make sure to square your building off using the Q on your keyboard. You can use Jossip to search to help review all your data. I often use it to make sure all my buildings are squared off, um, but before I do so, I make sure that there aren't any circle or round buildings that shouldn't be squared. Um, but if all the buildings in my selected area should be squared off, then I simply type into the search building equals yes, click search, and then from there, all I have to do is click Q on my keyboard. And another way to find that Jossum search tool is just by clicking the magnifying glass icon that's on the top of your Jossum window. The next slide. So for mapping to be complete, all items and instructions must appear to be mapped with all features having the proper tags. Make sure that major errors are fixed, even if they're unrelated to the task. And then any mi minor items missing are to be added while you're doing your validating. If you are the one mapping most of the task, trace all missing items and make sure that they're all aligned correctly. Try not to delete any features that are already there. If you need, rotate or fix the size of existing features to fit to the imagery. Once you've made sure that the area is completely mapped and ready, can go, ready to go, you can move on to step five. So I'll be talking about step five. Um, this is the point at which you are going to decide whether or not you are going to mark this task as valid or invalid. So this is very key because based on all of the work that you've been doing in previous steps, you're going to make a decision about whether you think that the task is complete and ready to be validated or whether there's a lot more work to do. So in the case where you're going to be validating the task, what you've done so far as Kate went over is um, trace any missing features and fix existing issues that you come across. When you decide that the task is complete and ready to be validated, you are going to first run the validation tool again after all of your edits and the issues that you've addressed and see if there are any more remaining issues that the validation tool comes across. If the validation tool does pick up some issues, you want to address these remaining issues, as was discussed the same way in step three. Um, at this point, you are going to upload all of the edits and changes that you have made during the validation process. And the way that you do that is by clicking the green upwards facing arrow. This will send all of the data that you have changed within JAWSUM back up to OpenStreetMap and the tasking manager. When you click the green upward facing arrow, it will pop up with this window. And in this window, it's very important to provide a meaningful change set comment, explaining the changes that you have made and what you're uploading, as well as noting which imagery you used. And oftentimes, Dawson will note which imagery you have been using automatically. So sometimes you don't need to type that in manually. Once that you've entered a change set comment and noted which imagery you've used, you're going to click the button that says upload changes at the bottom of that window. And Jawson will upload all of the changes that you have made during your validation process up to the tasking manager. And at this point, you will select that the task is valid. However, sometimes the task will not be valid. In that case, you are going to be invalidating the task. So the, the cases where this would happen is when the task from the active project has too many issues to be fixed. And during steps one through four, you find that there's just too much that needs to be addressed in this task and that it's not close enough to be marked as valid. At this point, you will stop the validation process and not continue on making changes and making edits. However, what you want to do is, again, upload any edits that you have made thus far in JOSM to OSM before moving on. And again, the way that you'll do this is clicking the green upward pointing arrow. And this will send all of the data and changes and edits that you have made up to OpenStreetMap. At this point, you will leave JOSM and return to the tasking manager after your few changes that you have made have been uploaded. And you will update the task status to no. So when it asks you the question, is this task well mapped? You will click no instead. At this point, you want to leave comments explaining what is left to do and tag the mappers who have been working on this task previously. And for your reference, you can find a list of all users who have worked on this task in the history tab of the tasking manager. 
This is important because if you want the mappers who have been working on this task to come back and return and fix some of the errors themselves, um, you are giving them a comment as to what they can do to fix some of these issues. Next slide. So at this point, um, you are back in the tasking manager and you want to thank the mappers who have worked on this task and mark it as complete. So this is sort of following up the step five where you're deciding if the task is valid or invalid. You should be thanking all mappers who worked on the square by typing the at symbol and then their username. And again, for your reference, a list of all people who have worked on a task is available in the history tab of Tasking Manager. The purpose of this is to positively reinforce mapping and encourage mappers to come back and map again. We're really hoping to invite mappers, especially new mappers, to return and to create a positive mapping community where people are excited to come map again and again. And by reaching out to them specifically and tagging them in the comments, um, that really makes them feel welcomed in the community and encourages them to return. Your messages should be encouraging and any critiques and tips should be constructive. This will help the mapper learn for next time. Your goal is to help identify things that they can work on in the future and not only to identify them, but often to explain directly to them in the comment how they can go about fixing that. And even if there are no issues, messages can act as a thank you for mapping, even if the task looked great and you could validate it very soon. So looking at the two comments at the bottom of the screen, we can see sort of what it looks like in Tasking Manager. So again, under the question, is this task well mapped? This is the part back in the um, valid or invalid step where you are going to be saying, yes, the task is valid or no, it is not. And we can see in these comments that they have selected yes and chosen to validate the task rather than invalidate the task. Next, looking at this comment, we can see they say thanks for mapping and they tag the mapper who's been working on the task. So they will directly be tagged in the comment and see that they've been mentioned. Um, and then they give a critique and a tip. Remember to square the corner of all of your buildings. They're identifying the issue and what this mapper can work on next time. But not only that, they also state directly the method that they can go about fixing the issue so that this mapper doesn't have to try and figure it out for themselves. They can simply refer to the comment and they'll know exactly what they need to do to address the issue. And so they state this can be done using the Q key. And lastly, state hope you map again soon, thanking them and inviting them to come back. So we have a number of different message examples here. Um, that can apply to uh, various different scenarios. We have some sample messages for just a general message that thanks people for mapping and ask them to come back and keep up their great work. Um, and we also have a number of different examples for small corrections that you can make for common issues. Um, one that comes up a lot is squaring of buildings. And you can see in these examples, they're thanking the mapper, tagging them with their username, and then stating to make sure that their buildings are squared and also reminding them how to do that by using the Q key. Um, another common issue is mappers not marking it as complete. Again, tagging the mapper, thanking them, and stating that they may have accidentally marked the task as complete, even if not all features have been traced. And another example is um, tagging features where they're reminding mappers to tag their features with appropriate tags, tags by referring back to the instructions of which tags they should be using. I also wanted to go over some useful plugins that you can use to really um, make Jawsome work very well for you. And so the way that you get plugins into Jawsome is if you go to the Jawsome pull down in the menu, select preferences, and then you're going to want to look for the blue puzzle piece that you can see in the image here. When you click that, that will go to the plugins menu and it will come up with a search bar. And in the search bar, you can search from a wide menu of different plugins, um, but these ones are especially helpful. And what you're going to want to do is when you search up a plugin, you're going to check the box next to the plugin. And you can check the box of multiple different plugins at one time. And then you're going to select download list, and this will install all of the plugins that you have checked off. So some of the specific plugins that I want to go over include Todo. Todo can be very helpful 
because it allows you to select a number of different features such as buildings or roads and add them to a to-do list that pops up in the side window of JOSM. And this will allow you to make sure that you're going through to each specific feature that you want to address and review and marking them off as you do so. Scripting is another useful plugin. I don't personally have much experience with it, but that can be very helpful as well. Mapathoner um, gives you a variety of helpful opportunities. One of the most useful is that you can select non-orthogonal buildings. And by doing this, JOSM will automatically select when you click that button, all buildings in the task that have not been properly squared. And so then they have all been highlighted. And one thing that you can even do is once these have all been selected, add them into your to-do list, and then you'll have a to-do list of all of the buildings that haven't been squared so far. And so you'll know which ones to go through and square. Lastly, mark scene can be very helpful because it adds a small version of the map in the corner of your screen and highlights which portions of the task you've already reviewed and which you haven't. Lastly, we have a number of resources available, including a youth mappers validation training document that covers a lot of similar things as we are today, a youth mappers JOSM training document that covers how to use JOSM as a software. Missing Maps has their own JOSM validation guide that has a lot of helpful tips for validation as well. There's a resource for useful scripts to use with the scripting plugin. And lastly, we have a number of recorded webinars. Okay, at this point, um, we're going to start doing the demo, but before we get into that, um, let me see where I put myself, put myself back on camera here. Um, there were uh, some questions in the chat I just wanted to address to make sure everybody saw those. Um, and one of them was, um, I'm trying to find it here now, um, as a validator, are we allowed to delete edits made by a user? That's always a sort of a, a decision that people need to make as they're working through uh, OSM. But generally what we want to do, and this is um, true for any contributor to OSM, is that we want to honor the edits that were made before we showed up. And if at all possible, fix the information that's there um, as opposed to removing it and doing it ourselves. Okay, that's just really sort of the, sort of the practice that, has, um, that, is, that is most commonly accepted within the OSM community. So we want to honor the work that was done on, uh, there previously, so we can change and edit it um, when possible. There are situations when things are such a mess, perhaps that we, you know, it's 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 easier to simply wipe things out and uh, do it yourself um, again. But we really try not to do that whenever possible. Always a bit of a judgment call, but try to incorporate the existing data whenever uh, whenever possible. Um, there was also a question about um, uh, squaring of buildings or finding buildings that uh, aren't square. As you heard Kenneth just say, there are a couple of tools. The scripting plugin allows you to use scripts that other people have written that do some of these things, such as someone's written a script that will find all buildings that don't have squared corners and find duplicate buildings. So it's the scripting plugin is a little more involved than some of the others and that you have to get the plugin, then you have to go get the script, load the script, and it's awesome, then you can run it. Mapathoner, um, I've heard some mixed things. When I use Mapathoner, um, I get the tools that will identify buildings that are in square. It allows you to draw multiple buildings sort of all at once and tag them all as building all at once. Um, some people aren't able to use the, or aren't able to see the duplication uh, button or the non-orthogonalized button, building button or option within that tool. Maybe it's a the version they're using, but I use it and I uh, find it quite, uh, quite useful for that. And then there was another question about the, uh, when Kate was talking about the imagery and asking if the Im uh, imagery to be used is already specified in the task instructions. And typically, yes, they should be. And for anybody that uh, is uh, on part of this presentation that um, will be creating projects in the future, please include information about the um, imagery you wish to use. Oftentimes when you load the data from the task manager, it will automatically up, uh, up or open up the imagery that it's to be used, but it doesn't always do that. Sometimes there are breaks and links and whatnot. 
So I always recommend that when you're generating and creating your project instructions, specify exactly which imagery to use um, in that. So if the imagery doesn't load automatically, anybody reading through, through the instructions understands, okay, Bing is the imagery to use or Max are, are, is the imagery to use. They, they can read it what, uh, which one uh, is to use. Or if you have custom imagery, you have the link there that people can copy and paste um, and open up uh, in Jawson as well. So it should be um, in the project and oftentimes is, but it isn't always there. And um, so just specifying it in the instructions is, is important. Um, are there any other questions that I missed that anybody else in the team see questions? Um, if time permits, I would like to see more examples of scripting plugin. Please and thank you. Yes, well, uh, if we can get some of that uh, going, we will. All right, so at this point, I think Kate is gonna kick off the first demo of uh, walking us through the entire process and hopefully time will permit while Kenneth do it as well, just to reinforce what those steps are. And um, as questions come up, please put them in the chat window, chat window and we'll address them um, periodically. Thanks. All yours, Kate. All right, everyone can see my screen, right? Yes, looks good. All right, so to begin this demo, we'll start with step one. Um, I already have our project pulled up and the task that I want to use. Um, but step one is to read all the instructions. So I've already kind of gone through them. I've worked on this task before, so I understand the instructions. But just to give you guys an understanding of what we're working with right now, this task or this project focuses, focuses on buildings, um, roads, and waterways. Um, they provide two links for us to look at. The first one is a tracing guide. Let's click to show you. My internet doesn't keep going. Um, and it kind of just shows you examples of how to trace certain buildings that we're going to be looking at in this project. And then the other one, which I've actually seen on several um, pro different projects, is how to trace different roads in Africa. And this one's really helpful and really important. And um, I actually sometimes just keep it up on my screen so that I can reference back to it because it tells you what different roads, like what they look like and um, how they should be labeled. So this is definitely an important um, wiki to look at and even just have open, like I said. Um, I'm gonna close it out for now. Okay, so they said a little bit about buildings, make sure that they're squared off, but that's information we kind of already know. Um, they mentioned, they talk about the roads and that they're not always what they appear to be. So you'll know a road is important if it's near other roads or clusters of buildings or towns or villages, and then just some tracing advice um, to save often, which we'll do. So I kind of have an understanding. I noticed they didn't mention anything about imagery, but so when we go into the actual, when we go into JOSM, we'll kind of go through the different imagery to see which align best. So I've got my task and I click validated selected task. I have my editor set to JOSM, and now we'll just open that right up. So now step two is align the imagery. Before I can align it, I kind of have to figure out what exactly is the imagery I needed. We'll start with Bing. And we're gonna just look around to see if everything fits right. This kind of looks like the buildings are where they should be. The roads are a little off, but we can easily go back in and fix that. Now there's some other buildings over here. Those all looked, looked pretty well aligned. Roads look good. So for the most part, this is pretty aligned imagery. And I still want to double check that I have the right one. So I'm going to go and check Maxar as well. So over here, the buildings look like they're aligned still. The roads look good. I just want to make sure down here. Um, over here, it doesn't look as good. Uh, it looks like there aren't buildings where these have been mapped. Nothing's really aligned. So I think that Bing is probably the better imagery for this task. But let's just say that it wasn't the better imagery and I wanted to use Maxar. I could align the imagery to fix. I just noticed it's only a little bit off. So if I go to imagery and then imagery offset and then click Maxar, all I have to do is just drag the screen around 
until it fits perfectly and then click OK and then click Cancel because I'm not going to use Maxar. I'm going to hide that layer. OK, now I have my imagery. I like what I'm seeing. I can begin the next step, which is using the validation tool. So I'm going to go down and click this blue check mark. I notice there's one warning. It was nice to only have a little bit of warnings. Um, so the warnings unnamed ways, I'm just going to double click it out. So see, it's this one highlighted here. I don't know the name of this road, so I'm actually just going to ignore this error. Um, but yeah, so then the next step would be to like visually assess what's going on here. I noticed that um, there are only square buildings and I actually am gonna use the search tool to square off all my buildings just by simply going here, typing in buildings equals yes, and then clicking search. Now all my buildings are highlighted and I can just click Q and now they're all squared off. So over here, I just interrupt you for one second, Kate. Because okay. um, the, the search window only popped up on my screen for a split second. Um, can you bring that up again real quick? Um, so the search function is very, very powerful. Um, and through that, you can search through the various key value pairings within, um, within your window here. And it'll identify, in this case, she's identifying every feature that's loaded that has a key value pairing of building equals yes. Um, so there's a number, there's, a, there's a, some wiki sites that you can go to to identify different things. You can specify you know, the number of nodes in the feature and different things like this if you're, if you're interested. So the search window is a very powerful one, but for something like this, where she knows all the buildings should be have squared corners, she can simply say building equals yes, and it'll select them all. And you'll see when she does that, they'll in the window on the right-hand side, um, right under tags and memberships, it'll actually bring up the information for those selected features. Sorry, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, all good. Um, also, I see uh, Willem just asked if what if one of those buildings equal gas is round. I just kind of visually check to make sure there aren't any round buildings. If they are, I don't do this. That's when you can use like the scripting plugin. I don't, I'm not really an expert on the scripting plugins. That's why I'm not using it right now. But yeah, if there are any round buildings that you can see, you definitely should not do this feature because then you'll just end up squaring those. Um, but yeah, so back to my visual scan. Uh, these buildings all look like they're properly aligned. I'm just gonna fix these rows to make sure they're better suited. Just quickly go through. And these roads all have labels and stuff. And then down here, I can see that this should be connected here. So all I'm going to do is click this node and then click A, and I can finish tracing it. And then to close it out, just double click. Now they're connected as they should be. Add these little details. And I noticed over here, we had some buildings that weren't exactly aligned. These look good. But this one's a little rotated. So I'm just gonna, um, I think it should be the same on other computers, but to rotate, I'm gonna do control shift and then just rotate and drag it to where it should be. If I need to change the size, I can do, I think this is different on Mac, but uh, I'm using a Mac, it's control option. I might be, I don't know if anyone knows what it is, not on a Mac, it might be control um, man, but don't quote me on that. Um, but I'm going to do control option and then just drag it in or out to change the size. But the size is good, so I'm going to leave it as is. Check it out. Fix this a little bit. And then it seems like everything is as it should be. Yeah, so I visually scanned and assessed all the issues. I'm just gonna go back in and click the, do the validation tool one more time to assure that I haven't added to any errors or missed anything. Um, so I ran the tool again, still showing that unnamed ways. I can't fix that. 
So I'm going to move on to step five, which is validating the task. And step five, this can kind of go two ways. It can go either you finish the validation or you go back to that kind of guide I showed you in the presentation where maybe you decide, okay, there's still a ton left to get done. And I see that people have edited this recently and that the users are active. So I'm going to send it back to mapping. In that case, what you want to do is upload any edits you made. But then when you get to this screen, just make a comment saying like, hi, at so-and-so, whoever was doing the edits. Um, there's still a few, like I've noticed areas where buildings still need to be mapped out and there's some rotaries, whatever needs to be edited. Just make a nice encouraging comment and thank them for their mapping. Um, and then select uh, no, as if this task is well mapped and it'll send it back to the mapping. So this is completely mapped, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna upload our edits and we're gonna write a comment. So I we have our own little um, youth mappers hub that we like to add. Um, wrong now. I've already added these comments. So we did align buildings and connect roads. So I'm gonna comment that there. And then I'm gonna add Bing as my image resource and click upload edits. Now I'm gonna leave a comment just saying thank you at um, thank you at so and so for taking time to map. Keep up the good work. And I'll sign off you. I'll say this task is well mapped and then submit the task. And then when it finishes loading, you'll see that it's now marked as validated. Um, I, know, I don't know if I ran through that too quickly, but if, did anyone have any questions about what we just went through? Or did I miss any questions in the chat? Oh, we've been handling the questions. Good job, Kate. Um, one thing I'll mention is that you saw Kate when we, uh, in the final message there, as the validation hub, we put in, you know, Youth Mappers Validation Hub because we are, you know, a, a small group of, uh, of workers on this and wanted to identify ourselves as that. Um, if you are validating work, you, you don't have to sign up with your name or anything. When you send that message or when you tag those people, uh, those contributors with your, um, with your sort of little love note, as we like to call them, then they will, get a message through OSM and they will see that it came from you or at least from your OSM user, uh, your OSM username. So you will be identified. Um, and so if they want to ask you questions maybe about the validation or about the work they did, um, they can communicate with you through the OSM network that way. So, but that's something that we decided we would put on when we were leaving the messages just so to identify, even though we are, will be identified individually by our OSM username, just letting people know that we are part of the uh, Youth Mappers Validation Hub. Um, but again, that is not necessary. But what we do encourage, as you just saw, was adding the complimentary comments, constructive criticism if needed, encouragement, and obviously tagging the person, the, the various contributors um, about that, uh, about their work uh, in, the, in that particular task. There was a question about uh, scripting about seeing that and using that. The, I don't have a script loaded right now, um, but the way the scripting plugin works is that when you load the plugin, you also need to have um, a script downloaded and scripts can be like JavaScript or Python. And then if you load the scripting, uh, the, the scripting um, plugin, then you can actually, actually let me, Kenneth's gonna demo very quickly here shortly, but this, let me, I'll show you my screen real quick. Um, so you can there see- There is a I'm... link to the script, the resource on the uh, the PowerPoint. Can, can you throw that link for the scripting back in chat or something? I couldn't find that. Yes, yeah, we'll do that. Thank um, you guys. I've, I've loaded the scripting plugin. You'll see it shows up here in the menu items. And once you load a script, once you have another, an actual sort of script program, you can choose to run. If I click on run, it asks me where to find it. 
right? So you simply go to it, run it, and then whatever that script does will we'll run. Or if you wish, you can open up the uh, scripting console. And doing this, we'll just run to another window and pull this into view. Um, now you can actually sort of write code into this window and click run. So um, a couple of different ways you can, you can get at it. But yeah, we'll put the link in there, Willem, um, for everybody to, to check out. All right, so I'm going to uh, step back and Kenneth is gonna go through this process again, just to try and um, uh, sort of hone in and, and reinforce those, uh, this whole sort of workflow again. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to be demoing again. Um, I'm going to start off by showing, um, I'm gonna start off by showing how to uh, make sure that you have your plugins. So the way that you would do that is go to the Jossum pull down in the menu bar and select preferences. It will then pop up a window. Can, sorry, can everyone see my screen? Yes, that's good. Okay. It will then pop up a window that we see here and you're going to want to click this blue puzzle piece and the puzzle piece will pop up this search bar. So here I might search up something like to do. I already have it checked off, but let's say I didn't. I would check this off right here and then I could also search at the same time a different one, say Mapathoner. And let's say I didn't have it checked off, I would check that off. And so you can select up to, you know, however many different plugins you want. And then you'll click download list. And you might have to restart Jossum, but Jossum will download all of those plugins. And then you will have those for your use while you're validating. All right, so moving on to the validation process. Over here, the first thing that I'm going to do is review these instructions. And as I see, especially in bold at the top, what we're doing in this task is tracing buildings, um, mapping road networks, and identifying waterways. And down here, we have all of these specifics that we need to be looking for. Um, and it has notes on buildings. Remember to square all the corners of your buildings and roads with a lot of details about roads in this area. And again, as Kate mentioned, it's important to um, check in on what they have linked. So making sure to review their guides for how to trace types of buildings. Um, and especially this, this highway tag can be uh, very useful on that wiki. Um, so again, I don't see a specific imagery. Some projects will state, please use Bing imagery or something in the instructions. And so I'll know when I go over to Jossum that that's the imagery that I should be using. But again, I'm not seeing a specific one. So that's something that I'll figure out once I'm over in Jossum. So now that I've read the full instructions, I'm going to select Jossum for my editor down here because we're not using ID, we're using Jossum. And here I have the task selected on the screen that I want to be validating. And I'm gonna click validate selected task. So now this downloads the data over into Jossum off of the tasking manager. So immediately, here's my data, but I don't have any imagery yet. So what I'm going to try doing is going to imagery and selecting Bing imagery. Now I have the imagery up and just like Kate did, I'm going along and I'm looking at these buildings and roads and it looks like they're lining up pretty well. So Bing could be a good option, but before I choose that one for sure, I'm also going to try Maxar. And you see on Maxar, well, first of all, it might not be the best choice because it looks like the Bing is actually maybe a little bit clearer. Um, the Maxar looks like it might be a little bit grainier. And also we see that the buildings here aren't really that well lined up with where people have trace buildings and where the imagery shows them to be. So I'm actually going to delete the selected layer of Maxar imagery from my screen because Bing looks like the way to go. So now what I wanna do is click valid, validate and this is running and actually validation has no tips. So these edits from, a, uh, from the validation tool standpoint seem to be working just fine. Um, one thing that I do wanna review is the mark scene tool while we're here. Um, mark scene, if I were going to zoom in very close on a part of the screen, um, will let me, will, will highlight for me which parts of the task I've viewed. And it's very important on Mark scene, you can drag this slider and this will 
change um, how zoomed in you have to be for it to count as you having seen that portion of the task. So that can be kind of important because depending on the size of the task, if I set it all the way out here, it will have marked me as seeing the entire task just by opening it. Um, so, you know, if you make it something smaller, like a smaller option, when I'm out here and going around, see, it's not counting me as having seen it. But then when I zoom in one more, okay, now see it's highlighting what I've seen. So I can know for myself, I have seen this portion of the task at a very close level and I've established that there's no buildings here. So I don't need to return back to this task later. So since validation didn't give me anything, I'm going to be needing to go through and visually examining the buildings and roads of this task on my own. One helpful option is I'm going to try using Mapathoner and saying select non-orthogonal buildings. I've done this and we see that for all of the square buildings, they look to have been squared. This one has been selected because this is not successfully squared. And this is a round building. So um, what I could do from here is then on the to-do list, I can click add, and that adds the two things that have been selected. However, this building is a circular building. So I'm going to mark this one as done. But now still on my to-do list, we see that we have this building, which has not been properly squared. I'm gonna select it and hit my Q key. And now that building has been squared. So I'm panning around, looking at these buildings. These all look to be good. This building could maybe be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to use this option to shrink the building a little bit. Over here, maybe this building could be a little smaller. And again, I want to respect the edits that um, the mappers have already made thus far. So while maybe in some cases, if let's say this building was rotated and over here, I, I might be tempted to just click this building and delete it and redraw my own building. But that's not what we want to do because we want to respect the edits and the time that people have spent into helping us map because that's really important. And we want to foster um, a strong mapping community with our volunteers. So looking at these, we see, okay, the road looks pretty good here. I might switch this around. Over here, I would actually say it almost looks like the road goes on this side. So I'm gonna, oops, <laughs> and just make sure that's still squared. Um, I'm gonna bring this road over here. These buildings look good to me. And okay, and then one other thing that I identified in this portion, it looks like we can see where um, this road has sort of been carved out a little bit. It can be a little bit difficult if the roads are sort of more on maybe the path side or the trail side, but here it does look pretty clear. So while the mapper has put the road over here, if we drag this away, we can see it looks much more like the road is on this portion. Oh. <laughs> and again, up here, we wanna fix this part of the road. So while I'm going through this process, this is the point where I would start considering whether I want to validate or invalidate the task. This task looks pretty good. It looks like almost everything is where it needs to be. I didn't even have anything come up when I um, ran the validation, when I first opened the task. So this is a pretty successful one. But if I opened up the task and it looked like there was a lot wrong and I'm going through and I'm reviewing certain areas of the task and seeing a lot of issues, that's probably when I'm going to start deciding that I want to invalidate the task. But again, in this case, everything looks good to me, so I'm going to validate the task. 
I want to remember to upload all of the few edits that I have made because while for the most part this task was good to go, remember I did drag these roads around a little bit. Um, so we want to make sure that that gets uploaded back to OSM and the tasking manager. So I'm going to click this green arrow, upload all changes. Here I might add a specific tag. And then here it automatically has obtained my source from the current layer. So this is what I was referencing in the presentation. Since I only have big air, Bing aerial imagery used, it automatically knows that I've used Bing. And then I'm going to click upload changes. Kenneth, we can't actually see that window uh, oh, on your screen. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> It's yes, yeah, sometimes does that depending on how you're sharing. Okay, so sorry. I'll run that again. Um, okay. Uh, try it now if you're displaying your whole screen. Your whole, yeah. Huh? Yep. Yeah, try it now. Okay. Um, so I just moved this node forward back. Okay. So here I'm clicking this green arrow and. Yeah, we see it now. Okay. Thank you. Um, so here's my upload window. I'm uh, reviewing the comment. In this case, I might add a specific tag that I'm from the Youth Mappers Validation Hub. And then, um, as I mentioned before, because I've been using Bing Aerial Imagery, um, Jossum automatically, because I have this checked, automatically obtain source from current layers. Jossum knows which one I've been using. And so it automatically inputs here that I've been using Bing. So this all looks good and I'm ready to validate the task. So I'm gonna upload my changes. I always like to check to make sure that the upload has worked successfully. You can see up here next to um, the title of the uh, application where it says Java OpenStreet Map Editor. If there's an asterisk to the left, that means you have unsaved changes. So whenever I click this green upload arrow, I make sure that the asterisk has gone away and then I know that it happened successfully. Kenneth, um, sorry to interrupt one second. Uh, we had a question in the um, chat about, uh, what about the road on, on top left corner? I didn't catch it myself, but do you wanna double check? That? Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, so also <laughs> apologies, this is, uh, I was just trying to provide a quick demo, but I, I think if I were going through this myself, I would probably spend a little bit more time going through um, the details of everything. But for demo purposes, I was just trying to, um, oops, I was just trying to uh, speed through a little bit more quickly. So thank you for um, catching that. It's very important to, because um, even though I had panned over the section, I didn't catch it immediately. Um, it is important to maybe review things and make sure that you've done everything correctly. Um, okay. Oh, and so now, since I've made that change, I'm going to want to upload again. Um, here we have Bing, so upload changes. And I see that it's been successfully uploaded. Okay, and we're back over here. Is the task well mapped? Yes, it is. And I want to add a comment. Um, I'm going to check over in the history and see all the activities. And it looks like we've had two people work on this. Um, so I know who I want to tag. Um, so yeah, I'm saying thank you so much. I'm tagging both of them. And then it seemed like the only really um, thing that these people could work on is again, the roads. It seemed like the buildings were all good to go, but um, make sure to compare your road tracing with the imagery. It can be tricky sometimes. Especially with pathways. And then I'm saying, hope you map again soon. And signing off with Youth Mappers Validation <laughs> Hub. So looking over this, I have my comment. I've suggested something to work on next time and invited them to map again soon and then signed off with 
um, which organization I'm from. And yeah, I'm gonna submit the task. And this is the task that I worked on. So now we see that it is finished. While you have your screen up, Kenneth, um, we had a question about demoing how to create a circular building. Can you sort of oh, yeah. draw a dummy one here um, for us, please? Yes. So I'm going to be using the um, B key here, which I think um, is that through some, is that a plugin? Yes, the, uh, the buildings plugin. Yes, so through the buildings plugin, all that I have to do is just hit the B key and that allows me to easily make a squared building. And then I'm gonna select that and click, no. <laughs> I'm for which, which? Uh... There's, there's two things you can do. Um, under the tools, you can align nodes in a circle, which, oh, yeah. only, which only takes the number of nodes you've created and puts them in a circle. So if you have four, it makes a square. If you have five, it makes a pentagon. Um, but if you want to make a proper circle, there's also under the tools menu item, there's create circle, which is shift O is the um, oh. is the shortcut. Um, so if I make another building and then select it, isn't there one that you can do where you've already made the, I don't know, maybe not. Hmm. The, the create circle, uh, you simply select that tool, draw the uh, diameter of the oh, right. building, okay. and then when you click the button, it'll, it'll generate enough nodes to create that into a circle. Just go to your regular draw tool, like you use uh, a oh, oh, oh. shortcut. All right. And then actually select the, um, the tool under the tools menu item, create circle. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I don't find myself making many circles. <laughs> um, oh, and then there so one other thing is that um, here in the circle we've just made, it's not properly tagged. So you wanna make sure that this gets tagged. Please select a key building, please choose a value, yes. So this is going to add the tag building equals yes to the circle that I just created. And now we can see that the outline is pink rather than gray. So Jossum recognizes this as a building rather than just something that I've traced. And there is a shortcut and it's escaping me right now. I don't know if anybody else on the hub here remembers when you're using a building tool, there's like a control P, you control something R or something and it changes it to a tool that will actually trace around buildings and tag them as buildings, much like the buildings tool will create a structure, a feature with squared corners and tag it as building. There's a, within that tool, there's a shortcut you can click that will, um, like a, a key, a hotkey combination you can click where it changes it to everything you draw is now a, is a round, uh, round building. Um, but I can't remember what that is offhand. There's a shortcut for that. I know we talked about it in Jawsome, but now it's also slipping my mind what it is. Yeah, um, I know if anybody knows what it is. Let me see, I was gonna read through the um, chat with us here to catch all the questions. There was one question um, that was asked if in cases where a user creates a building and upon checking from different imageries, it's not a building, how do we deal with this? Um, so sometimes the imagery does change. The project may have been around for a few years and has gone a long time without anyone really editing it. In this case, you wanna try and avoid deleting obviously other people's edits, but if you can move the buildings to maybe new buildings, as long as there are no special tags, it's just regular building equals yes, you can do that. But other than that, then you are kind of resorted to just delete the building if they no longer exist. But try and avoid that. If you can move them to new features, do do so. Exactly, yeah. I mean, sometimes the building is quite old. Sometimes the imagery it was traced from is quite old. And then all of a sudden you get new imagery and it looks like there's a big highway going through there. Um, if you can sort of, with all the resources available, 
be as positive as you possibly can be that the building no longer exists, then absolutely um, remove it, but uh, try and, you know, uh, use what's there uh, whenever possible. Any other questions that we missed? Or any new questions that people may have? Because we have, what's, it's uh, 20 minutes here according to our initial time. Anything else you guys would like to see that are on the call here? Um, perhaps uh, repeated or um, demoed again or something like this, we can sort of go over these things again. I will say that this is being recorded and um, we will make the recording available um, shortly after, uh, after, this, uh, after this is concluded. Dara will email everybody and let them know that it is available once um, it's been processed. Okay, Willem just put in a, in the chat window about drawing circular buildings with the building tool. Shift C to get the circular buildings and shift R to, to toggle back and forth. Once you're using the building plugin, shift C and shift R. Thank you, Willem, for putting that in there. A question here, I've been to a lot of mapathons and one thing I observed is they have this validation team. So if you are a part of this team, does it mean that you are only limited to validating that, ta that task I'm assuming you're meaning? Um, I can, uh, some projects and some groups will have a validation team that will focus on their, um, their tasks, but as a validator, if you want to validate and Trick, of course, I think it was mentioned in the uh, in the um, in the chat window here earlier is about finding projects to validate. Um, as you noted, the I think it's Dan. I think you brought the question again about trying to find projects to validate that aren't restricted to people who have a um, an official, as it were, validation status with HOT. Um, that can be a little tricky. I don't think there's a filter to change or to find projects that allow anybody to uh, validate. However, if you do look for projects that perhaps aren't urgent, and I know a number of youth mapper projects that aren't necessarily urgent, won't have specified that only validators can, or only like validator trainees or whatnot can, can validate this task. So it does take a little bit of digging, but there are a number of projects that anybody who's learned how to validate can validate, uh, especially if you're not part of the hot training, uh, validation training uh, program. But it does take a little bit of digging, unfortunately. Um, oftentimes, if the project was set up, was set up by HOTS and it's an urgent task, they'll want their um, validation trainees uh, on it right away. And it'll be sort of more of a focus for them as part of their training, which is why they specify that they want it uh, only validated by their validator uh, trainees or intermediate or advanced validators um, within, their, within their sort of network. But it does take some time, a little bit of digging, so we have to sort of look for that. Willem, yeah, if you want to uh, demo the circular building uh, tool that you noted there, by all means, please get Jocelyn going. Sure, I can do that. Um, actually, I just found out that those that little copy and paste is put in that is for the Mac. The keys you actually want to use are Alt R and Alt Z. But let me get my screen share going. It says host uh, disable participant. Just so people know, uh, Willem actually is one of our uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> interns for the summer. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, sorry, so I, I work at the Texas Tech University, a staff and student there. I just started an MS program there. I'm president of our Youth Mappers chapter here at Texas Tech, and I'm an intern uh, on the validation team. Having a blast, learning a lot. It says host is disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, 
give me two shakes of a lamb's tail here. I will. Uh, yes, sir. All right, you should be good to go. And share screen. We're going to share this screen. That should be working. Can you see this? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. You see some random features I've just been practicing with over here. I can delete those. Obviously, there's not any buildings that big that are around, um, but you would hit the B tool to bring up your building to plug in, which we're all familiar with that, um, which now you would hit Alt Z to bring up your circular tool or Alt R to bring up the rectangle tool. You can also find that by going up to data, set building size or set building shape to circle rectangle. It's right here. So you'll notice that um, the cursor that Willem has there, you'll see as it changes from building to circular building to the bottom sort of to the bottom right of the oh, uh, yeah, it looks like cursor, a silo. Like the change from a silo to a sort of a, a rectangular building between the two. Uh, so it sort of identifies what you're yeah. tracing at that time. And again, because it's the building plugin, it not only traces the feature, but then it automatically tags it as well. So if you're mm -hmm. using a circular feature that we showed earlier, as Kenneth was uh, uh, demonstrating, once you create it, you then have to select it and then tag it as the appropriate uh, feature with the tag and um, with the key and value uh, pairing. So that's that. Some other helpful tools that if you are using the building tool, um, say like you came up, oh, here's a good example, like this building is close, but not quite. You can hit the S tool to drag it. And then you, I like to hit the X tool for extrude and you can just drag into whatever shape that needs to be. Or for example, say this is like an L-shaped building. Let me select this point and delete that. Say this is an L-shaped building with the X tool for extrude. You can double click anywhere and then just drag that little, oh, I messed up a little <laughs> bit there. Of course, the one time I make an example, it messes up. But so uh, like you can just pull, man, it's really not liking that today. That's a helpful tool though, when it works. <laughs> yeah. And maybe, well, it should be, yeah, the buildings, it's a, if the corners are all orthogonalized, um, then it should work fairly, fairly soon. Oh, yeah, the extrude, it, yeah. Tool is, the extrude tool is fantastic as well. Uh, that was my problem, I didn't orthogonalize, yeah. Hit the Q first, and then now you can double click and pull that building down just like that. So that's that's super helpful, um, especially if you're dealing with, like that building was inappropriately moved. My little order operations, you, you saw, I just moved it over and then adjusted the features to more reflect the reality of that building. Like this one is a little off, but you can hit Control Alt to scale. We mentioned that earlier. Oh, let's see, Control Alt, the select tool will scale a building. Control Shift will rotate it. So the the combination of those two things is pretty helpful. You can like kind of scale it into position and then extrude it into the shape you want. I don't know if that's exactly perfect, but oh, another helpful tip. Say I had this, like say I knew this was a house, building equals house. It may not be. I'll, I'll change this. You can take this next building and the shift R will duplicate all tags over from like repeat is R. I, I didn't name this. Um, but it will take over all the tags from that. So if like building equals house, um, name equals Willem's house. When I copy, that didn't work so well. But when I copy all that over, it will pull shift R. It will pull all that information over with it. So that's kind of helpful. That's just a little things I learned recently. But uh, yeah, that's, I hope that helps. One, that was the new one for me. So when you select the feature, if you want all those tags, so you're going to apply them to another one, what is it? Again, you select the feature and then you use a control R to shift R shift R will shift duplicate R. all the tags from the previously selected feature. And so this okay. is really helpful. Say like I was mapping out a whole bunch of water tanks in West, in West Texas and there are water tanks specifically not oil tanks. And they're at a certain known meter height. And so going through and adding all those tags is really arbitrary, but you could like, First, I just drew my, uh, let's see, Alt A, I think is it? Yeah, first I drew my circle and then I added building equals that. I did added all my tags in there. And then you can either start duplicating that circle with Shift D or you could copy all that over with R, Shift R. 
duplicate all the previous selected things into there. Very cool. Which is, which is helpful. I mean, if you're, especially if you're mapping numerous features of the same thing, that could be really beneficial. Here's like a round building right there. So you can just watch this work. There we go. Nice. Um, fast draw is kind of a helpful tool. Or say you want to increase the resolution of like this. Th say this row is already mapped, but not very well. Um, actually, let's continue this on to here. Connect it up. Um, here's, a, here's a classic example. So this highway unclassified, That's I select that. I select this and then hit Shift R and it'll copy over all the tags I need. And then another helpful tool I like is the W key. It's accuracy tool, and it will move over the closest node to you, or you hit control and you can add another node into there. And really quickly, you can come in here and increase the accuracy of a way just like that. That's very cool. Just a little pro is, tips. <laughs> that's, yeah, no, I mean, the, there's so many sort of shortcuts and little tips and stuff that people have really thought of. and just takes a little time and experience to sort of go through them. And as you start to use a few, then, you know, you'll get, uh, you'll get more, more practice at it and become more sort of second nature um, mm -hmm. too. So there's another question here. How do we deal with gray color tasks? The one in the bad imagery status. All right. So you're talking about in the tasking manager, um, when you see the various squares there, the various tasks, sometimes you'll see one that's grayed out. That means somebody's gone in there and then updated it to indicate that it's bad imagery. So in cases like that, there's not much we can do from a contributor standpoint, um, except maybe if it's been there a while and it hasn't been addressed, you can perhaps uh, send a message through tasking manager to the, um, to the manager of the task and say, hey, do you have, can you suggest alternate imagery for, the, uh, for this area? Because there's too much, too much cloud cover. Um, It'd be great to reach out to the project manager first to sort of get some guidance on that. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, if you, you know, if the, if the imagery needs to be, sorry, if the project needs to be mapped, then um, you can look at alternate imageries that are available and see which ones sort of give the clearest um, view of that area and are of a similar vintage. So they, you know, they have similar uh, amounts of that information. And then you will then have to adjust that imagery to match all the features that are currently traced. Right, so it's using all the imagery um, and adjusting it before you start tracing. But I think the first step would be to reach out to the project manager and say, hey, there's some bad imagery in task 1477. Do you suggest an alternate, do you have an alternate imagery you prefer us to use? Um, if you don't hear anything back after a short day, you want to sort of continue working on this task, then I would um, look at the other imageries and see which one sort of really fits and matches as best you can, and then trace it. But make sure when you're uploading, always, always, always identify which imagery was used. And even when you trace that, when you go back to tasking manager to close up that task, identify, you know, the project requested Maxar, uh, the mm -hmm. imagery or, you know, initial imagery was cloudy, used Bing um, instead. So make sure you specify that very clear, not only in the chain set comment, but in the comments, in tasking manager so everybody's aware what imagery was used to create those features it takes a little bit more work but there is you know there's a way to work work with it and the more notes you put in that change that comment the better honestly so that yes exactly future generations can know what you're doing and so i'll often will put like source equals being imagery compared with maxar and that's enough to like let us know in the future what you're doing with it yeah, exactly. All right, cool. Well, Thanks, Willem. Yeah, you this bet. Great. Glad it could help. Is there anything else anybody wants to see before I click off of this? I can't see chat right now, unfortunately. Or are we all good? I think we're all good right now. Let me see. Uh, generally, looking at hot projects in the testing manager, has validation really achieved its purpose? Uh, has, it, has validation achieved its purpose? That is a great question. And um, hard to really quantify, I think. I mean, generally, yes, because with a second, third, fourth set of eyes on data, you will see um, 
you'll see improvements in the data because of people going over, uh, having just one other person going over the work that an initial contributor has made will, um, will improve it. You'll find mistakes, you'll make fix those mistakes. Um, I have not seen a lot of data on, I think some people are trying to figure this out on if like the comments that we're giving back to the community. I mean, it's good practice, but mm -hmm. these comments that we give back to the community, are they having a really big impact on getting those mappers to come back and improving the quality of their edits? That's a harder metric to- That's a hard one, yeah. Uh, to pull out of the data. And I know that question has come up and some people, like one of the guys that's working with us, with youth mappers, um, Jennings, he has sort of done a lot of sort of drilling down into the uh, data sets and looking at various metrics out of the data based on, um, on user usage and, and contributions. But that, that one is, that one's a hard one, uh, is a hard one to do. Um, but it'd be great if we had some hard data on that and, or if we knew which kind of comments or, or frequency or even time limits, if someone's, you know, mapping within, within a week and they got a comment on the edits they made, if those were successful in bringing them back. Whereas if you're, sending a comment to somebody who was mapped, you know, for a, you know, one weekend a year ago. A year, and they'll never open it. And they, you know, they may never know it again, right? I mean, we don't know, but the practice is always to include um, our chain set comments and sorry, to include the contributors in those chain set comments to be not only to be inclusive, but in the, in the, uh, in the you know, opportunity and the chance that they do come back, we have those comments and the idea is to improve the, um, improve the uh the community uh, the matters uh, and, the, and it's an important thing we got to foster those relationships <laughs> exactly unfortunately exactly. a vast number of mappers only map at a mapathon one time and they don't come back to it and so maybe there's something to, to it like you said like we got to encourage these people in a timely manner really nicely really politely and mm -hmm. I, i'm a firm believer that validation is an, an important administrative and social skills task is trying to trying to foster those people but absolutely and and anybody who's creating a project um, especially for youth mappers, we encourage it, but anybody at all, youth mappers or not, if you're creating, creating a project and you're generating these data, have a validation plan in place of some sort. Um, work with some people, identify who those validators would be if possible, um, and then to really sort of, sort of get that sort of closing part of that project done. Because once that project is, has been mapped and then has been validated, then you can archive that project. And that's mm. one of the issues we also have within the testing managers, both uh, HOT and the teach testing manager, is that project, the projects are created and then they're sort of set off to do their own thing. And the project manager doesn't necessarily go back and ever follow up on it um, and close it out or archive it should it need archiving um, or need people to be nudged to work on it further. So that's something we're trying to sort of educate people mm -hmm. on. All right, cool. We are, where are we at? We're almost at time here. Are there any final questions here? There was a question in the chat I'm seeing now uh, about time limit for validating, much like when you were tracing and it's been answered, but I'll just articulate it here. So it's in the recording um, that you get mm. two hours when you started validating a particular task, you have two hours in the tasking manager for it to, to finish the um, finish the validation process. Be it saying, yes, it's mapped well and closing it out or saying, no, it hasn't been mapped well and prompting the contributors to come back and finish it. And of course mm -hmm. that will then open it up for other contributors to continue to map it. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'll get you to stop uh, sharing your screen, please. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you very much for that. You bet. Thank you. Absolutely. And um, what we'd like to do is um, I'm going to stop uh, stop recording at this time, but I'd like to get a um, screenshot of everybody.